I'm going to show you my favorite new yarn. It is a yarn that all of you will be able to do and that you will love doing and it will help with that little stash adjustment. I can't be the only person who has oh a quarter of an ounce of cashmere and silk in a brilliant blue color that is just stuck away because I don't know what to do with it. I have bits of silk, I have bits of wool, I have bits of cashmere, I have bits of everything, 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 everything. And one day I decided I'd just spin them all together. In the old days when I um, lived in Montana, I used to take all my teaching samplers, all everything that was on my bobbins. You know, I, in, when I lived in Montana, I didn't work in in the winter and uh, I'd sit by the fire and we'd have our breakfast coffee and um, my dearly beloved husband would read me a story and I made this wonderful yarn. This is a variation on that yarn and I call it scrap because that's what it is. All the little bits and pieces and I'm going to spin them in a really untraditional way. And it should make your hair stand up on end. It did when I started thinking about it because I thought, how can I spin cashmere? I don't want to spin it worsted in my sweater yarn, but I've got some silk, which I have to spin worsted. Spin it as you like it. There you go. So I'm going to start. Here's the tail end that I pulled off the um, top that we were spinning. This is the blue face, blue face luster that we were spinning, BFL. And I'm just going to spin it for a while. And I'm going to spin it the way I like to spin BFL. I'm going to let a little twist run into the web. Whoops. And I'm not even, I'm not going to worry about diameter. I'm not going to worry about twist per inch. I'm just going to spin it the way I want to. Just the way I like it. Now, I'm going to spin it until I've either run out of it or I'm tired of it. And there, I'm going to spin now. I think I'll add a little bit of the beautiful silk, silk and wool, same blend that we were using before, slightly different color. I'm going to throw a little bit of that on. Because it, I want it to bring out the silk, I'm going to spin it worsted. And it's going to be way finer than the other yarn that's on there. I don't care. <laughs> I just don't care. So here I go, spin away. The other thing is, I often found in my own work that my yarn was getting way too consistent. So this is a great way to stop that. It's not going to be a consistent yarn at all. So I'm going to spin this for a bit, and then I'm going to stop, throw it down. And you know, I'm spinning a little faster than I normally would. And I usually don't even think about it. I just pick up the next one. Just reach in and pick it up. If you've got you're distributing silk or cashmere through it, you might want to say, OK, every so often I'm going to put a bit of cashmere in uh, just so that you don't have a yarn that has lots of bits and pieces in it. So this one, I'm going to spin a little bit semi-woolen, because after all, this is my sweater yarn. And this is quite a bright, bold color against the greens and the smoky color of the almost amethyst color. So I'm not going to use a whole lot of it. And then. Look at what I have. I have alpaca and silk. It's just lovely. And it's a natural black alpaca with white silk. It's this beautiful pewter color. I think I'll spin a bit of that. Just it'll tone down that a little bit. And, oh yeah, look at that. And this one, no choice. I have to spin it worsted. So off we go. And I'm just going to spin bobbin after bobbin after bobbin of this. No rhyme or reason. I do put them all in one big um, basket. I weigh it so that I know that I have enough, about a third more than I need to make the yarn that I want. And then um, I do color coordinate it a tiny little bit, not a lot. And I throw in lots of scraps that wouldn't fit anywhere else. Okay, I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of this green because I love it so much and I think it will be great just to spot the color in there. And this is the one that I let the twist go into the web. It's a BFL. There. So you can see how much fun this will be and easy to do and takes all the anxiety out of spinning. And I'm sorry to say it does break some of my, my own rules and preconceptions. <laughs> so just spin according to the fiber type that you pick up. Don't worry about it at all. Don't worry whether the colors all match. If you have them in a pile and you like them together, 
they'll be just fine, just fine. Um, I'm going to show you my sweater yarn in a minute. This is for my beach sweater so that I won't be missed. Um, if I'm lying there with my uh, tripped on a log and my ankle sprained, they'll see me on the beach. It's bright red. It's a lovely color. So let's just take a look at this one because I think this is really nice and I might make this blend. Again, it's a little difficult to show you the full range of color. So maybe I'll just fold it back on itself. Oh. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop doing this. I'm just going to roll it on my hand so you can see how the color is going to build up. And it will be smaller intervals of color because I'm going to apply it. Now, here is the thing. I, I know a lot about textile rules and regulations. And, um, and some of them I feel really firmly about. And one of them that I will always tell you is that if you want a good knitting yarn, make a three or more ply. That's going to make you a really dandy fine knitting yarn. And it's going to bloom in the stitch. It's going to be wonderful and get the most value out of your yarn. I have all sorts of good reasons for that. It's a way that, um, it, it's just a very helpful way to uh, spin for knitting. So, do you know what I did? You know, I didn't sample. And so I took my beautiful yarn. Then I'd spun, you know, I'd spun it off and on over a couple of months. And I had enough for a sweater. And you know what I did? I didn't sample it. I just went ahead and three plied three bobbins full. That is almost two and a half, three ounces per bobbin. That's 12 ounces of wool. Do you know what it was? It was a dog. It was a complete and utter dog. And you know, it wasn't the yarn of my dreams. I was like bitterly disappointed. I went back. I, there's nothing I can do with it. I'm going to have 12 ounces that I'm going to use for some other kind of project. I went back and made the yarn into a two-ply. It was exactly the yarn I had in my mind's eye. It was the yarn that I was looking for. It had texture, and that's what I wanted. If I'm going to spin everything unevenly, I expect to get some texture from it. 